Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is a J-Man Time and today I have a video on top 5 most powerful tankettes of World War II. When we think of World War II armored combat, we normally think of medium and heavy tanks like the German Panzer III and IV and Tiger tanks or the Soviet T-34 and KV-1 series, or even the American M4 Sherman and the later M26 Pershing. But when most tank enthusiasts don't think of when it comes to the most powerful tanks of World War II is the tankettes. Tankettes were a type of a very small, almost armored gold card-like tank that was used during the Second World War. They were mostly used as either reconnaissance vehicles or as infantry support vehicles by both the Allies and Axis powers and even neutral countries that were involved in World War II like Finland. So let's go over some of the most powerful tankettes that were used during the Second World War. These were tankettes that were actually feared by both the Allies and Axis powers. These are pretty much the smallest of the deadliest tanks of the Second World War. And the first most feared tankette of the Second World War was the Italian L333 Contracaro, which was a, an Italian tank destroying tankette that was introduced in 1941 in both Libya and Tunisia during the fighting in North Africa. These were modifications of the old Carrier Mati Carlo Velos L333 tankettes. They were refitted with a Swiss Solar Thorn S18-1000 anti-tank rifles. These were 20mm rifles that were purchased by the Italians in 1941. Italy purchased at least 3 to 400 of these anti-tank rifles. Most were issued to infantry. At least 20 to 30 of these anti-tank rifles were fused or combined with the L3 tankette, creating the Contra Caro. Now, this isn't the first Contra Caro. The first Contra Caro appeared in Spain during the Spanish Civil War of 1936 through 1939. The Italians in Spain had actually created the first Contra Caro by fusing a Brita 20mm autocannon to L333 tankets that were serving in the Spanish Civil War. This concept was later brought back in 1941 during the fighting in North Africa, where the Italians needed more tank destroyers to handle the large number of British and later American tanks that were entering the battlefields on Libya first and later during the fighting in Tunisia. These Contra Caro tankets were used by the 31st Tank Regiment of the 131st Division Centauro. The Centauro Division was known for fighting both in Libya and Tunisia and took part in some of the largest tank battles that happened in the battles of North Africa, including the Battle of the Kasserine Pass, the Battle of Sidi Bouzid, and the Battle of El Guttaro against the British, American, and Free French tanks. During the Battle of the Kasserine Pass alone, the U.S. and British forces lost over 183 tanks and more than 616 Allied armored and unarmored armored fighting vehicles. A large number of these were destroyed by mostly German and Italian medium tanks, but some of these were destroyed by tankettes like the L333 Contra Caro. The Contra Caro would continue to serve all the way up until the end of the fighting in North Africa. A few of these would survive to go on to fight in Italy itself, but ultimately these vehicles disappeared post-1943. And that brings us to the next most powerful tankette on the list, and this one comes from Poland during the German invasion of Poland in September of 1939, and that is the Polish TKS NKM WZ-38FK, and this was a modification of the Polish TKS tankette fitted with a 20mm autocannon. These vehicles were constructed between 1938 and 1939, and they were a basic modification of the standard TKS tankette. The main armament was one 20mm NKM WZ-38FK, a dual-purpose anti-tank and anti-aircraft autocannon. The armor thickness was 4 to 10 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of 40 kilometers per hour or 29 miles per hour, and had a crew of two. Only 24 of these vehicles were constructed just before the eve of World War II, when Germany would invade Poland on September 1st, 1939. The 20 millimeter main gun of this vehicle had an armor penetration of between 18 and 35 millimeters, meaning it could penetrate the armor of the early model Panzer 1s, 2s, and even some of the early model Panzer 3 tanks. 
These tank-destroying tankettes were used on several occasions to slow down the German advance. The first came from the 101st TKS Reconnaissance Tank Company under a Polish lieutenant named Zdzislaw Zimski. Zdzislaw Zimski's reconnaissance tank unit armed with the TKS 20mm tankette was able to slow down a German armored column of Panzer 1s and 2s during the defense of the city of Landcut in September 1939. During this skirmish, they managed to take out at least three to five of the German lightly armored Panzer I and two light tanks before both sides were stuck in a stalemate. Ultimately, the Germans would temporarily retreat during this battle, but would come back several days later and overrun the Polish tankette division. Another successful use of the TKS armed with 20mm autocannon came from a Polish tank ace named Edmund Roman Orlik. Orlik drove his single TKS NKM model 1938 armed with a 20mm cannon and managed to take out more than 13 German light tanks and mostly Panzer 1s, 2s, and maybe even a Panzer 3 medium tank. Before his tankette, before his loan, the tankette was ultimately overrun and he himself was wounded in battle. The TKS with 20mm autocannon was one of the most powerful tankettes of the Second World War. And this 20mm autocannon could penetrate upwards of 30mm of armor. After the fall of Poland in September 1939, the Germans would capture the remaining TKS tankettes, including the 20mm variants and would use those tankettes themselves mostly as occupation vehicles until the end of World War II. The next most powerful tankette on the list comes from Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia, and this is the Czech Skoda SID T-32 self-propelled gun tankette. This was technically one of the first self-propelled tank destroyers in the world. These vehicles were developed by the Skoda company in Czechoslovakia for the Army of Yugoslavia. Only eight of these vehicles were produced and sold to Yugoslavia between 1938 and 1939. The vehicles were armed with one 37.2mm Skoda A31-37.2, which was a dual-purpose anti-tank and field artillery piece. The armor thickness was 5 to 22 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of 41 kilometers per hour, or 25.4 miles per hour, and had a crew of two. And only eight of these vehicles were constructed for the Yugoslav army between 1936 and, and 1938. These vehicles were based in the city of Zamund when Germany invaded Yugoslavia in April 1941. They were tasked with protecting the airfield from potential German airborne assault because the Germans had used airborne assaults on the island of Crete during the German invasion of Greece also in 1941. Later on, they were redeployed to defend the towns of Topala and Meldovnuk between April the 6th and April the 18th. During that time period, they managed to slow down the advancing German forces for a few days at a time, knocking out three German tanks and one armored command vehicle, and they were also used as anti-infantry vehicles. Three of the T-32 tankettes broke down during the battles and were abandoned, and the rest were either captured by the Germans or ran out of ammunition and were destroyed in combat. After the fall of Yugoslavia, the Germans would use the remaining vehicles as occupation vehicles until 1944, where they were shipped back to Germany and scrapped for metal, thus ending the history of the most powerful Yugoslav tank or tankette of the Second World War. The next most powerful tankette on the list actually comes from the Empire of Japan, and that is the Japanese Type 97 Tiki. The Tiki was a turreted tankette that was developed in 1936. It was actually a redesign of the Type 94 tankette, which was a machine gun armed tankette that was also being used by the Japanese since about 1932-1933. Its main armament was one 37mm Type 94 gun, which was the same gun used on the Type 95 Hago light tank. Some versions of this vehicle were fitted with a single 7.7mm Type 97 machine gun. The armor thickness was 4 to 16mm and the vehicle had a speed of 42 km per hour or 26 miles per hour and had a crew of two and was pretty much the most powerful Japanese tankette of the Second World War. It is one of the few tankettes to score multiple victories against tanks that were much larger than itself. The tanks were first used in China during the Second Sino-Japanese War starting in 1938 all the way up until 1945. 
They were mostly used against Chinese tank kits armed with machine guns. These are mostly Italian L-333 tank kits sold to China, and also some British Cardin Lloyd tank kits. These tanks also encountered some Vickers light tanks that were sold to China armed with a 6-pounder 57mm shotgun. At least 4 to 8 of these tank kits served in the Japanese 3rd and 4th tank regiments during the Battle of Cold King Gold against the Soviet Union in 1939, also known in Japanese as the Battle of Nomohan. During this battle, between May and August of 1939, the Japanese tank arm faced a much larger Soviet tank arm fighting on the border between Manchuria and Mongolia. The Soviet Union had hundreds of BT-5s, BT-7s, and T-26 light tanks, and also BA-6 and BA-10 heavy armored scout cars. During the battles of Cold Kingo and the Mohan, the Japanese managed to destroy some 253 Soviet tanks and 385 heavy armored cars. At least 10 to 20 percent of these were destroyed in tank battles involving both the 3rd and 4th tank regiments. The Type 97 most likely had some kills against the Soviet BT-5s, BT-7s, T-26 light tanks, and Soviet BA-6 and BA-10 heavy armored cars. The Japanese would lose only 29 tanks during this encounter. The Type 97 was also used against British and American tanks during the battles of Singapore, Malaya, and during the Japanese invasion of the Philippines. There, they were mostly faced British light tanks like the Vickers Mark 1 through 5 series, and they would also face some of the British rain gun carriers and armored cars. They would also face American M3 light tanks and some of the American M2 light tanks during the fighting in the Philippines. But the Type 97 would come out on top and the Japanese would ultimately win those battles. But later on, after 1942, the Japanese would encounter more heavier, more powerful American tanks like the M4 Sherman, which the Type 97 simply couldn't deal with. And the Type 97s were mostly destroyed in engagements with the American made Sherman tank. Type 97 would go on to fight in almost every battle during the island hopping campaign between the Japanese and American forces all the way up into the final battle of Okinawa in 1945, making the Type 97 Tiki the most useful tank yet and one of the most feared tank yets of World War II as both the Chinese, the British, the Soviets, and even American ground crews did fear counterattacks by Japanese units and regiments armed with the Type 97 Tiki. And finally, that brings me to the most powerful tankette ever used in World War II, at least in terms of its main armament. And this tankette actually comes from Belgium. This comes from the Battle of Belgium in May 1940. And this vehicle is known as the 47mm anti-char SAFRC Cardin Lloyd Mark V, or pretty much the Belgian Cardin Lloyd gun carrier. These gun carriers were constructed by the Belgium arms company known as the Founder Royal de Canons between 1931 and 1934. These were experimental self-propelled tank destroying tankettes that were constructed using six British built Cardin Lloyd Mark V tankettes that were purchased in the same year of 1931 through 1932. These vehicles were fitted with a 47mm Belgium-made FRC Herschel 47mm model 1941 dual-purpose anti-tank and field artillery. There was also a second prototype fitted with a Canada 76mm FRC model 1926 mortar gun, which was an anti-tank mortar gun that was fitted to this vehicle at one point. But the 76mm gun was too powerful and was later replaced with the 47mm. The armor thickness was 6 to 9 millimeters, and the vehicles had a speed of roughly 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour and a crew of two. Only six of these prototypes were constructed and they were entered service in 1935. Later on, they were given to the Belgian Border Guard Regiment, known as the Cyclist Frontier Regiment, later on in 1938 and they would serve alongside 42 Belgian-made T-13B tank destroyers, which were Belgian-made tank destroyers converted from the British Vickers artillery tractors and fitted with the same 47mm gun. When the Germans invaded Belgium on May the 10th, 1940, these vehicles were stationed on the west bank of the River Meuse, 
between the towns of Vignes and Lixi. And during the battles on May 10th, these six tank heads engaged German light and medium tanks of the German Panzer divisions that were crossing in to Belgium and the Netherlands at the same time. It is unknown if these tankettes scored any kills against the German light tanks that were coming in, but the vehicles were in action for at least the first day of the battle. During the fighting, these vehicles tried to retreat, but some of them were captured by the Germans. Many of them simply ran out of fuel and ammunition and were abandoned. And by the end of the first two days of the fighting in Belgium, most of the six tankettes were captured by the Germans. The Germans would later use these vehicles as occupation vehicles after the fall of France in 1940. What happened to these tank kits after 1940 is unknown, but they were most likely dismantled for scrap metal and their 47mm guns were most likely issued to German occupation forces. And there you have it. These were the most powerful tank kits of the Second World War. Some of these tank kits had main armaments that were powerful enough to take on the armor of some light and medium tanks that were used in the early part of World War II. Which of these were your favorite? If I had to choose, my favorite would obviously be Japanese Type 97 Tiki because I always liked that Japanese tank kit. But which of these were your favorite? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.